Hello there. We're just waiting for Miss Havisham, and then we'll close the door. It is a quiet reading. So... They're going to perform it again across the hall. <laughs> Actually, let me do this. Which will make it a little... So, we could... What do you think, Dan? <laughs> He's still pulling on his lip. <laughs> Trying to decide. Oh, I see. That's a, that's a difficult... Thank you very much. You're not the first. <laughs> You're going to get a lovely view, sir. Oh, it's fine. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it gets better when I stand up. <laughs> oh, I was wondering why. There have been other times people sat there and I thought, why does anyone want to see my daddy the whole time? Not that there's anything wrong with it, but uh, I thought, thank you for that little tidbit he was saying, not at all. I say we are really wondering about Lady Rebecca. You haven't seen her yet. Not yet. Um, yes. let me see. She's a big newt. She's a big newt. I don't she's know. Yes, well, she does have a big tasting room. Um, she will be reading from Oliver Twist. She did just finish performing. So, that is why you have not seen her very often. She's been and and she's a very delicate creature. She needs to have a moment to repose, as it were. Yes. So that is it. Obviously, Miss Havisham's doing the same thing, which is why we're sitting here. Would, would you care to have me go and bury her? Why don't you her just out? yell for her? <laughs> you don't know how loud he can get. No, we've all just been sitting here looking pretty. That's good. <laughs> You're very pretty. Aren't they? One of them are going to marry Dan here. <laughs> We're working that out even as we speak. <laughs> Has anyone read? Hello, where is my page? There we go. Has anyone read Great Expectations? Oh, you did? Then you can tell me all about it. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Well, just to give you a little information, let me stand up so I can see more of you. Great Expectations, as the title would indicate, is about those great expectations and hopes we all have. And sometimes we don't. Now listen, I'm going to give you a test on this afterwards. <laughs> it's about all those hopes and expectations that we have, and sometimes we don't obtain them, and sometimes we do and wish we hadn't. As is the case with Miss Havisham and a ward of Stella. And now a selection from Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. Seated by the fire... Miss Havisham still had Estella's arm drawn through her own, and still clutched Estella's hand in hers. When Estella gradually began to detach herself, she had shown a proud impatience more than once before, and had rather endured that fierce affection than accepted or returned it. What? Are you tired of me? Only a little tired of myself. Disengaging her arm, Estella moved to the great chimney piece where she stood looking down at the fire. Speak the truth, you ingrate. You are tired of me. Estella looked at her with perfect composure, and then again down at the fire. Her graceful figure and her beautiful face expressed a self-possessed indifference to the wild heat of the other that was almost cruel. You stock and stone. You... Cold, cold, hot. What? Do you reproach me for being cold? You? Are you not? You should know. I am what you have made me. Take all the praise, take all the blame. Take all the success, take all the failure. In short, take me. Oh, look at her. Look at her so hard and thankless on the heart where she was reared. Where I took her into this wretched breast when it was first bleeding from its stabs and where I lavished years of tenderness upon her. At least I was no part to the compact. For if the more can speak when it was made, it was as much as I could do. But what would you have of me? You've been very good, and I owe everything to you. What would you have? Love. You have it. I have not. Mother by adoption. Retorted Estella, never departing from the easy grace of her attitude, never raising her voice as the other did, 
never yielding to either anger or tenderness. Mother, by adoption, I have said that I owe everything to you. All that I possess is freely yours. All that you have given me is at your command to have again. Beyond that, I have nothing. And if you ask me to give you what you never gave me, my gratitude and duty cannot do impossibilities. Did, did I never give her love? Did I never give her a burning love, inseparable from jealousy at all times, and from sharp pain? While she speaks thus to me, let her call me mad. Let her call me mad. Why should I call you mad? I of all people. Does anyone live who knows what set of purposes you have half as well as I do? Does anyone live who knows what a steady memory you have half as well as I do? I who have sat on this very same hearth, on this little stool that is even now beside you there, learning your lessons and looking up into your face, <coughs> when your face was strange and frightened me. Soon forgotten. Time soon forgotten. No, not forgotten. Not forgotten, but stored up in my memory. <coughs> When have you found me false to your teachings? When have you found me unmindful of your lessons? When have you found me giving admission here to anything you excluded? Be just to me. So proud. So proud. Who taught me to be proud? Who praised me when I learned my lesson? So hard. So hard. Who taught me to be hard? Who praised me when I learned my lesson? But to be proud and hard to me. Estella, Estella, to be proud and hard to me. Estella looked at her with a kind of calm wonder, but was not otherwise disturbed. <sighs> when the moment was past, she looked down again at the fire. <coughs> I cannot think why you should be so unreasonable when I come to see you after separation. I have never forgotten your wrongs and their causes. I have never been unfaithful to you or your schooling. I have never shown any weakness that I could charge myself with. Would it be weakness to return my love? But yes, yes, she would call it so. I begin to think. I almost understand how this all comes about. If you had brought up your adopted daughter wholly in the dark confinement of these rooms, and never let her know that there was such a thing as daylight, by which she has never once seen your face. If you had done this, and then for a purpose, had wanted her to understand the daylight and know all about it, oh, you would have been disappointed and angry. Miss Havisham, with her head in her hands, sat making a low moaning, swaying herself in a chair, but gave no answer. Or, which is a nearer case, if you had taught her from the dawn of her intelligence, with your utmost energy and might, that there was such a thing as daylight, but that it was made to be her enemy and her destroyer, and she must turn away from it, for it had blighted you and would else blight her. If you had done this, and then for a purpose had wanted her to take naturally to the daylight, and she could not do it, you would have been disappointed and angry. Miss Havisham sat listening, but still gave no answer. So, I must be taken as I have been made. The success is not mine. The failure is not mine. But the two together make me. Miss Havisham had settled down. I hardly knew how upon the floor, among the fatal brided relics with which it was strewn. Her gray hair was all adrift among the other bridal wrecks, and was a miserable sight to see. Thank you very much.